always be safe and be aware and comply with all the different COVID guidelines, but she comes to church in this sanctuary, as well as supporting St. John Baptist Church online uh, with the online platforms that we have. Uh, she is always, always has St. John at the center of her heart. All right, I just want to give a shout out to my wife, uh, Dorinda Marsh. Um, we just want to let you know that we really appreciate all the sacrifices that you make for the family and um, everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And we just want to let you know that we appreciate you on this Mother's Day. Um, we want to let you know that we love you um, and we don't say it enough and we should say it more, but we just want to say it on Mother's Day because uh, they are honoring you and we just, we honor you today and we just want to let you know that we love you and you are our Wonder Woman of the Year. And we just want to let you know that we really appreciate you. Um, we, we know that you are, uh, you know, recently retired. We know that you uh, have worked with kids in the school and, and then you come home and you, you cook and you do things for the family. Um, and we just want to let you know that even with our kids, Rasan and, and Jordan, who you take to appointments and, and you do things for them on a day-to-day -day basis. We just want to let you know that we really appreciate you. And, um, and I believe that, you know, this is why you are nominated for, uh, you know, Woman of the Year and you are the Woman of the Year in our household. And so we just want to let you know that, once again, we love you. Well, um, she has inspired me personally because um, of all the things that she has taken on, she's taken on a lot. I mean, you know, she's, she's worked at the library, she's, she's been a school teacher, um, working with children, and then on top of that, she comes home and on a day-to-day -day basis, she does things for the family that she really doesn't even have to do. And so, you know, we're just inspired by what she does. Um, and you can see that she might be tired sometimes, but she continues to do what she does. And we really appreciate it. Um, yes, Dorinda has sung on the, the choir. She sung on the praise team. Um, I know she's sung, um, uh, but yeah, she's sung on the praise team. Um, I, I think she's worked with, uh, yeah, she's worked with the Boy Scouts, Boy Scouts of America. Um, and so she's just taken on so many different tasks and we just, you know, we just appreciate her for that. And I know you all appreciate her. And, um, and once again, we just want to wish her a uh, uh, happy Mother's Day on this Mother's Day. Well, <laughs> you know, like any mother, she makes sure that um, everything around us is clean, you know, washing our hands and uh, disinfecting things and just making sure that we all protect it uh, around the house, you know, and you, you can't ask for anything more than that because sometimes living with uh, a bunch of guys, you know, sometimes uh, you know, we can be a little messy. And so we just appreciate her for, you know, all the sacrifices she makes once again, uh, coming behind us, cleaning, disinfecting, just doing just motherly things. And I just want to say that, you know, Dorinda, we really love you. We, we don't, we can't say it enough. And we want to let you know that you are the Wonder Woman of our household. God bless you. Mama. Mama, you know I love you. You know I love you, Mama. Mama, you're the queen of my heart. Your love is like tears from the storm. Mama, I want you to know loving you is like food for my soul. God bless you. We love you.
the Lord, saints. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. This morning, we're coming from 1397 Penniman Road. Here at St. John Baptist Church, we welcome you this morning. How many of you feel welcome this morning? Oh, hallelujah. We thank you right now for showing up for us, Lord God. Oh, we thank you that we can come on in and worship in spirit and in truth. Oh, we have come to magnify the Lord this morning. Oh, hallelujah. We are so thankful for all the beautiful mamas here this morning. Oh, hallelujah. All right, children, we can do better than that. We're here to just say thank you for all the mamas in the house this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. And as we go through this service this morning, I'm asking the Lord to just touch anybody that has lost a mother. Yes, Lord. That wishes that right now we could hear the same old story that they told every time we sat around the kitchen table. Or to hear the admonition of saying, child, I told you to cut that out. The things that we don't know we're going to miss. But Lord God, we thank you that you are a comforter this morning. That you're going to lift up our heads. That we're going to praise you as never before. Because God, you're doing mighty things as never before. Oh, we worship you this morning. How many want to magnify the name of the Lord this morning? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Can't praise him enough. He is worthy to be praised. I know that we're all a little quiet because it's raining outside. And mamas and grandmas would tell us when it's raining, what are we supposed to do? Shh. I don't know why we're supposed to be quiet when the rain is coming down. But right now, God is raining his blessings upon us. And we should be shouting for his goodness this morning. So anybody want to shout in them this morning? Something you want to just push out? You now have to be a woman, but you can birth some things in the spirit by just breathing out that hallelujah that's deep down on the inside of you. So I ask this morning that you just don't sit there and be a spectator but that you participate in the service and watch God do something awesome and amazing on the inside of you. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. At this time, we will have prayer from Deacon Curtis Lassiter, followed by announcements. Amen. 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 We could all stand as he prepares to pray. Good morning. Good morning. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we come before you with thankful hearts, thanking you, Lord, for all that you've done for us and all that you've continued to do. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us throughout another week. Thank you, God, for allowing us to come out this morning and worship you in, in praise. Thank you, Lord, for the choir that has been prepared for, for the sermon this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you have blessed those who are not uh, listening to us on Zoom this morning, all those throughout the world. But we just thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your house again one more time. We thank you, Lord, for blessing the sick and the bereaved this morning. We ask that, Lord, that you will heal their bodies. Lord, we ask that you would give a special blessing from my family who has lost a loved one, my wife, mother-in-law, stepmother, I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for our youth this morning. We pray, Lord, that you continue to be with them and guide them and strengthen them, Lord. Keep them on the right path. We thank you, Lord, for all of those out who have not know you. We pray, Lord, that you will bring them in. We thank you, Lord, for those who have brought a person this morning to your house looking for a church. 
We just hope, Lord, that whatever we say here this morning, we draw them all up to you. We thank you, Lord. We pray for the women of this church, Lord, on this Mother's Day. Lord, without our mothers, what could we do? You have provided them with all the things that we need. They have nurtured us and grown us, and there's some up going on, Lord, but we still go back to where our mothers, the thought that she put in our hearts. And Lord, we just pray for our pastors this morning for the sermon that would be brought to us. We pray, Lord, that we would get something from it that we can keep in our hearts. And Lord, we just thank you for all your blessing, all that you've done for us, and all that you continue to do. These blessings, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. God has allowed us to be here this morning, and we are so thankful. During this pandemic, there are many people who are at home, afraid to step out, and for different reasons, cannot step out. But by the grace of God, we're here. Amen, amen. We want to thank everyone for your continued support of the protocols that have remained in place. And you will see the speakers up here uh, removing the mask for clarity so that you can hear what they're saying. Um, but we ask that you keep your mask on. Um, we want to thank everyone for your continued support of the protocols that have remained in place to keep us safe from this COVID pandemic. The protocols and the grace of God have allowed us to continue in-person worship services. Fortunately, the virus is not as deadly or requiring the high rate of hospitalizations that occurred in the past. Still, the rate of infection for this new variant is increasing throughout the nation and we must remain vigilant. Please get your vaccinations, including boosters, if you're able to, if your doctor says you can get that. According to current data, an alarming 90% of hospitalizations for COVID are unvaccinated individuals. At present, we are utilizing every other, um, while attending service, wear your mask properly with your mouth and nose completely covered throughout the time you are in church. And I know it's uncomfortable, it's fogging up my glasses and all of that, but uh, it's important that we protect each other. At present, we are utilizing every other pew. We will have six persons to a pew with exceptions to families who are given more space. St. John Baptist Church is large enough for everyone. And we welcome you. We know that this has been a challenging time as we do not get to greet each other and fellowship the way to which we are accustomed. With the ple pleasant weather outside, <laughs> not so pleasant today, <laughs> We ask that you allow the ushers to direct everyone to the proper exits. This will allow for more open gatherings in the parking lot and lower the risk for infection within the church. Uh, what we're saying is we don't want to linger in the church at this time if we're able to uh, gather in the parking lot. Um, the, the longer we're here in this uh, sanctuary together, close up, the more likelihood there are um, chances of spreading the virus if, in, if someone has uh, contracted it. Again, we thank you for your obedience and protecting others as well as yourselves. Thank you. Amen. 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 We will now have our beautiful church clerk, Stephanie Stoutenberg, continue with the rest of the announcements. And followed, following the announcements will be the presentation of Mother of the Year by Brother Curtis Lassiter, Jr. Good morning to you all. Good morning. For next Sunday, May 15th, 
we will be celebrating Women's Day. (laughs) The theme is Women of Faith, Children of God, Warriors for Christ. And the foundation scripture is from Joshua chapter chapter one, verse nine. All ladies are asked to wear lavender, white, or a combination thereof. In addition, on that Sunday, the Community of Faith Mission will have a presentation to honor St. John and the individuals who have worked diligently to continue serving the community. The position of finance chairperson is still open. Anyone interested, please send your letter of interest to our Human Resources Committee. The St. John Baptist Church Pastor Search Committee is seeking applicants and will continue to seek them to May 15th. Uh, There are three websites that you can go to to apply. Excuse me. They have been listed earlier in the program and during our Saturday announcements. The National Office of the General Counsel from the NAACP will be conducting mandatory legal redress training for all Virginia State Conference branches. This training will be held on Tuesday, May 17th at 7 via Zoom, and that Zoom link has been provided for our membership. This is also a reminder that the general membership meeting will be held this Monday, May 9th at 6.30 p.m., and that Zoom link has also been provided. As a reminder, as a reminder, if you or any other member of this church are turning 90 years old in 2022 and would like to be honored, please notify the church office. We would like to honor you during your birth month. We would also like to wish each and every mother or mother figure a happy Mother's Day. We would not be able to be here without you. Good morning, St. John Baptist Church. Good morning. Good morning. And I want to say to my mom, because I haven't had a chance to really talk to her today, happy Mother's Day. And I want to tell Denise, happy. <laughs> no. And I also want to tell my wife, Denise, happy Mother's Day. Amen. All right. So I guess today is Mother's Day. And again, from me, um, from St. John Baptist Church, we want to wish all of you a happy Mother's Day. And I hope that you enjoy this weekend. And I hope that your family is spoiling you today because you deserve it. So I guess we can get now to the, we have two finalists, nominees for the, um, for the Mother of the Year for St. John Baptist Church 20, 2022. And we're gonna start off first with one of our nominees. And this, this mother was nominated by, um, by Minister Jimmy Marsh. And this strong Christian mother has made her life's work helping young people. Um, she recently retired from James City School, James City um, School System after teaching special needs children for 37 years. Along with her already busy schedule, she worked at the Williamsburg Library, um, helped other children with reading, writing, and studying. She also worked with the Cub Scouts and later with the church Boy Scout Troop 195 as a committee member. You have also witnessed her raise her voice in song to our God through St. John's Church choirs and praise team. This mother 
takes her calling from God to help children and her life's commitment. She also raised her daughter, um, Simone and son Donald, through her love for her children. She and her husband adopted two sons, uh, Rasan and Jordan, who are now teenagers. Her husband, Minister James Marr stated, Dorinda's love continues as she comes home and provides for her family. She is a wonder woman at our household and now enjoying retirements. We are blessed to present an outstanding Christian mother and one of our honorees, Mrs. Dorinda O. Marsh. Amen. I also want to direct you to when you when you finish here today, all right, we have we have a special presentation for Mothers of the Year. If you were here earlier um, this morning, you would have had the opportunity um, to watch that on the, the big screens in here. But when you again, when you leave here, you can go on Facebook, YouTube, or series of, of other various um, internet platforms, and you can see it also. Um, and I will say for four nominees, it's one thing for me to tell you about them, but it's another thing for the, for, for example, for Dorinda Marsh, um, for Minister Marsh to, to actually talk about his wife um, as a mother. And also um, Deacon Lewis, we, we also have him on tape also where he's talking about his mother. So I could say it one way, but I just, I just recommend that you go watch that. Yeah. And then I guess now we're gonna go to our mother of the year. Um, again, for St. John 2022. Um, and I'm just gonna start reading this first. So there's a, there's a quote, may the works I've done speak for me, may the life I live speak for me. These are the words to the song, let the life that I live for me. These words describe the spirit and enthusiasm that our mother of the year displays in her daily life and walk with God. As a young 12 year old child, she gave her life to Christ and became a member of St. John Baptist Church. Over the decades, she has devoted her life to different ministries of St. John. She has served with the culinary ministry in warm nights. She continues to be a dedicated member of intercessory prayer ministry, Sunday school, the hospitality committee, and the senior ushers for over 30 years. She also serves as the co-sponsor of the prayer and praise ministry. Our honoree has been blessed to retire from Owens, Illinois after 30 years of service. She has also worked in daycare serving children. She continues to walk with Girls Track and work as a Mary Kay consultant for over 25 years. Our honoree is a mother, grandmother, great grandmother, sister, aunt, and friend to all. She keeps Christ as a focal point of her life by praying, trusting, and living by his holy word. She continues to be active with St. John in many ways while keeping COVID protocols in place. She does not allow God's work for us to be diminished. She encourages us to be active in the Lord's work online and in person here at St. John. Her son Michael states since January 20, 2020, when my life changed forever from organ failure through a 10 month journey of health issues, divorce and kidney transplant, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit never left me and neither did my mother. She was also there physically, spiritually and emotionally. She is a devoted mother to her five children, Tina, Terry, Michael, Helen and Desi, now deceased. We are very blessed to honor our 2022 Mother of the Year, a very loving, dedicated, and strong Christian mother of St. John Baptist Church. I present to you, Mrs. Verma S. Lewis.
um, if you don't mind, could you could you come forward so we can embarrass you in front of everybody? I just, oh Lord, mm. I, I just thank, thank everybody. I, I just, I, just uh, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> this is really a, <clears throat> a wonderful, wonderful surprise. And um, I know uh, some years ago, my sister, uh, she nominated me and uh, I didn't get it that time, but praise the Lord. Uh, and I know Dorinda, she is a wonderful person, been knowing her for years. And she's mother of the year too. She should be staying right up here with me. Mm -hmm. But I just want to just thank uh, everybody that uh, voted for me and and thank the church, all, all of my colleagues and and my friends and members of St. John Baptist Church. Been here for many, many years, many. But, but I just try to stand strong right. and walking with Wilma every Saturday and keeping up with the young people. Right. That's what keeps me young. I work with them and it keeps me young. Everybody be asking me, why don't you retire? I said, I do little babies and I got two little great grandkids. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> but they will keep me young. They keep me young. And the presence of the good Lord living in my heart. So I just want to thank you. Hi, sweetie, how you doing? So good to see you. <laughs> but uh, that's all I have to say. I thank all of you, every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. That's um. Does, does the family want to take a photo? So while they're doing that, um, there's there's one other thing that I wanted to do was, and that was to recognize um, the non-agenarian. Ladies of St. John Baptist Church 2022. Um, we're going to start off with Martha. And these are, these are women that are over 90 years old in our church. And we, have a, and we have a lot of them. So first of all is Martha Graham, um, Vivian Lee, um, Alzenio Holmes, Lucille Meekins, E. Harris Bernard, Ruth Jack, and if any of you are here today, um, if you don't mind, you said Delanor, Delanor, yeah, Eleanor, Eleanor Banks, um, Ruby Thomas, Louis Phillips, Flora Randall, Redell King, and our mother. And our mother of the church, who is who is actually 103 years old. Amen. And that is and that is Everlene Thompson. So let's give another another hand clap to Mrs. Lewis. And that is, oh, we have one more thing. So normally in the back, you'll see we have a, a big plaque that we use. 
and we just have listed of all the um, mothers of the year. I guess we started doing this in um, 1994. And so, yeah, for 1994, you can just keep going down all the way until 2022, where you can see the beautiful Verma S. Lewis. Amen. So again, thank you for everything. And um, yeah, we appreciate your love and your service here at St. John Baptist Church. Amen. 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 It's a joy that my sister in Christ has received that reward. And she's such a humble person that she wouldn't care if her name was written on the plaque. Long as her name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. She knows, she knows, we know, that she can praise the Lord like none other. She could dance like David danced, and she can shout. So right now, as we go into the next question. Y'all acting like I was gonna sing. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing, I'm gonna hum. But our wonderful music ministry is gonna render a song right now. Amen. Feel free to praise right along Amen. with it. Jesus, help 
myself together. Um, next we'll have scripture from Sister Marilyn Kennedy. But as she comes forth, let's continue to praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, glory to God. says I have to have it. I'll be reading Proverbs 31 verses 1 through 31. However, I've chosen to read from the contemporary English version because of the impactful vocabulary. What King Lemuel's mother taught him. These are the sayings that King Lemuel of Massa was taught by his mother. My son, Lemuel, you were born in answer to my prayers. So listen carefully 
Don't waste your life chasing after women. This has ruined many kings. Kings and leaders should not get drunk or even want to drink. Drinking makes you forget your responsibilities and you mistreat the poor. Beer and wine are only for the dying or for those who have lost all hope. Let them drink and forget how poor and miserable they feel. But you must defend those who are helpless and have no hope. Be fair and give justice to the poor and homeless. A truly good wife is the most precious treasure a man can find. Her husband depends on her and she never lets him down. She is good to him every day of her life. And with her own hands, she gladly makes clothes. She is like a sailing ship that brings food from across the sea. She gets up before daylight to prepare food for her family and for her servants. She knows how to buy land and how to plant a vineyard. And she always works hard. She knows when to buy or sell and she stays busy until late at night. She spins her own cloth and she helps the poor and the needy. Her family has warm clothing and so she doesn't worry when it snows. She does her own sewing and everything she wears is beautiful. Her husband is a well-known and respected leader in the city. She makes clothes to sell to the shop owners. She is strong and graceful, as well as cheerful about the future. Her words are sensible and her advice is thoughtful. She takes good care of her family and is never lazy. Her children praise her and with great pride, her husband says, there are many good women, but you are the best. Right. Charm can be deceiving and beauty fades away, but a woman who honors the Lord deserves to be praised. Show her respect, praise her in public for what she has done. Word of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Sister Kennedy, for that powerful reading of the word. Amen. Next, we're going to have a song from the music ministry, and that'll be followed by a sermon from our very own Reverend Doretta Hill. Although she needs no introduction, let's just go ahead and talk about her goodness in public, as the word just said. Oh, hallelujah. Not only is she a mother to her own children, but she's also a spiritual mother to many of us sitting here in this church today. We thank God for a woman of God who will walk here, walk there, drive here, drive there. Whatever means it takes, she's her journey that she walks, her steps are ordered in the Lord. So we thank the Lord right now for our wonderful, our hmm, such a treasure to have such a humble and obedient servant of God willing to do and go wherever he says, all to help those in need, whether in prayer or just a kind word. There's not a time that I can remember Reverend Hill either answering the phone or speaking that she didn't say, let me pray for you. So we thank God this morning for not only a prayer warrior and someone who helps to minister to God's children, but someone who has no shame in proclaiming the gospel with power, with his infallible word, and only by the unction of his Holy Spirit. So after this hymn of praise, the next voice you hear will be that of our very own Reverend Doretta Hill. Amen? Amen.
thank the Lord for another God's day and thank God for all the mothers. We thank God for you mothers that may be biological, natural, adoptive mothers, surrogate mothers, foster mothers, grandmothers, Great grandmothers, great, great, great grandmothers, guardians, whatever kind of mother you are to those children that you teach. We thank God for you today. We appreciate you. We congratulate you. We salute you. We thank God for you, and we do not take you for granted. We appreciate you, all the whoopings, <laughs> or, or should I say all the beatings. Reverend, Reverend Lassiter says somebody, I, sh I might get in trouble for this. I heard him say one day somebody beat him. Well, I got beat too. I got beat with sticks rubber hose, I got beat with ropes. And my mama, she was the worst beater. She beat worse than my daddy. And she always would say, wait till your daddy get home. We didn't have to wait till daddy get home. I wanted him to get home so she wouldn't have to whoop me. My mama could whoop and then she could slap and pinch the skin off your arm. One day I crawled up to the pulpit underneath the pews, went up there where the pastor was. That was the last time I did that. <laughs> I thought I was going to heaven after I got home. <laughs> I'm saying this because this, this is my example of my life of what I, my mother taught me and how she made me into what I am today. I didn't like it then, it didn't feel good. And I used to say, I don't know why I'm in this family. These people down the street look like they got better parents than mine. I don't know, God, why did you put me in this family? All these people doing this family is beat you and whoop you and fuss at you, talk to you over and over about the same subjects. Something is wrong with these people. But you better not call 911, huh? You better not call the police or things get worse for you. And they tell you, call, go ahead and call the police. I said, something really is wrong with them. Go ahead and call the police. And that would have, I guess, I never tried it, so I don't know what would have happened if I would have. <laughs> I never, I had enough sense, I guess, to, to, to just uh, not call them anyway. And I was always a child that was, uh, it didn't take much for me. It was nine of us. It didn't take much for me to put God's fear in me. So, you know, I was one of those ones, you know, I cried before the belt came out put clothes in the back of my pants. 
when I knew I was going to get a spanking. That, that's how I was. And I think some of that is still with me, God fearing. But I'm going to thank God for it all, count it all joy. It all is working for the good according to Romans 8, 28. Now, I want to thank God for the deacons. I want to thank God for all the ministers. Minister Payne, thank God for those words of grace that she poured upon the ministry work that God is doing in my life. I almost didn't know who she was talking about because I wasn't always saved, but I thank God that he has done a great work in my life. And I thank God for God, all of the mothers here at St. John, I learned a lot from you all. I do. And I thank God I have learned a lot from you all. And I thank God for the non-genarians, the mothers that are over 90. And I thank God for the mother that received the award today, victory to Sister Verma Lewis. Thank God for that, because I see her in action pretty much every day that she's working over at the Griffin Yates Center. So I know this to be true. Amen. Well deserved, well done, Sister Verma Lewis. Amen. God bless you and your family. And I wanna thank God for all the mothers here today. You mean so much to us. And keep on being the mothers that God called you to be. Thank God for the ministry at St. John Baptist Church, the ushers, everyone. Thank God for you. I will, and I thank God for everyone, every part that has been rendered today unto God and unto the service of brothers and sisters in the Lord and those that do not know the Lord, even those out there online. We thank God for you, mothers, and we celebrate you, and we ask God to continue to bless you, and we appreciate you, because really, uh, motherhood is a ministry as well. My work today, this comes, the hard part has already been done. So let me go ahead and give you the easier part. The scripture has already been read for your hearing. We thank God for the word of God and for sisters and brothers that come forth with the word of God, amen. So I will give you Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. And that's the only one I'll read because it has been read in its entirety for you. So Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30, the word of the Lord declares and proclaims, charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Let us pray. Eternal Father, thank you for your word. Let your word go forth and fall on good ground that it would not come back void, but it will accomplish your blessing, your mission, your purpose, and your holy will, and your holy plan. Thank you, Lord. Hide me behind the cross that your people will not see me, but will receive what the, thus say the Lord. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Let the church say amen. amen. The text, the text of this message is taken from Proverbs chapter 31, 30. It proclaims, charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Mother's Day began by Miss Ann Jarvis, who wanted to celebrate her mother who was an elementary school teacher principal. She was known as Miss Mary Tao Sassen. Her daughter labored earnestly to have April 20th, her mother's birthday observed in schools, homes, communities, and churches nationwide. This observance would strengthen 
and build up the family bonds that would breathe a hope of a future where language is music, thought is life, and love is practiced. So, in 1907, the first observance of Mother Day was announced and celebrated as a national observance. We praise and thank God for Mother's Day. Celebrations, mothers, whether you are a biological, adopted, foster, surrogate, grandmother, great godmother, etc. Congratulations to all mothers on this auspicious occasion, this day, this special day that is set aside for celebrating, for honoring, for saluting you, for your steadfast love, faith, dedication to God, family, community, and church. Let's look at an, uh, an acoustic using each letter that spells the word mother. M is for the million things she gave me. O means only that she's growing older. T is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for a heart as pure as gold. E is for her eyes with love light shining. R means right and right she'll always be. Put all the letters together, they spell mother. She is the one that means the world to me. This is what was happening in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10 through 31. It was about a virtual godly mother teaching her son how to obtain a godly wife and what she should be like. An acrostic, an acrostic of praise of a mother's worthiness. The, this passage aimed on this Mother's Day is to inspire women to fear the Lord and to be like this woman in the way she fulfilled her role, which is possible for all women, married or unmarried. It should inspire others, especially husbands and children, to praise women who fear the Lord. And it should contain praise for the godly woman. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. What does it mean in daily experience to fear the Lord? Back to the beginning of Israel, the nation's life, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 18, after the giving of the Ten Commandments, the text says that when all the people perceived the thundering and the lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, the people were afraid and trembled. They stood afar off and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will hear, but let not God speak to us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to prove you and that the fear of him may be before your eyes that you may not sin against your God. Here God is speaking of the people having a godly reverence and love for God and trust and obey him and his word. In this, the fear of kindling God's power wrap against sin ought not drive us away from God, but drive us closer to God because we need his love, grace, mercy each and every day. Therefore, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs chapter one, verse seven. The woman who fears the Lord has practiced wisdom. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is in her tongue. She is full of peace, security, and hope. This wisdom gives a God-fearing woman a gracious wisdom and freedom from anxiety about the future and what's to come. This wisdom keeps the God-fearing woman near listening to and praying to 
the merciful heart of a loving God, her fortress, her shield, her refuge, her peace, her sanctuary, her comfort, and the sun, S-O-N. Psalm 3411, Isaiah chapter eight, verse 13 says, the Lord of hosts, let him be your fear and let him be your dwelling and he will be your sanctuary church. It keeps her under the shadow of his wings where she will not be afraid of God. Psalms 91 verses one through five. Therefore, the fear of the Lord is accompanied by great blessings. In Psalm chapter 25 verse 14, the friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him. He makes known to them his covenant. Psalms 31 19. How abundant is thy goodness, right. which thou hast laid up for those who fear thee and long to take thy refuge in thee. The angel of the Lord encamps around about those who fear him and delivers them. Psalm 34, 7. As the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards those who fear him. Yes. Psalms 103, verse 13. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. Yes. Psalms 145, verse 19. The Lord fulfills the desires of all who fear him. Yes. The Lord, the Lord promises, the promises God makes to those who fear him are very incredible. They summon to fear and their hope in God. So the psalmist puts them together. In Psalms 33, verse 18, as he says, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him and those who hope in his mercy. In Psalms 147, verse 11, it says, the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his mercy and his grace. Uh, thank you, Lord. The word of God is declared that it may be said, a woman who fears the Lord will not run from God to satisfy her longings and relieve her anxieties. She will wait. She, I say, she will wait. She will wait for the, for and continue to have full trust in the Lord and his promises. She will hope in God. She will stay close to the heart of God because there are treasures too glorious to forsake. Why should we praise such a woman? Charm is deceitful, I said. Beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised, church family. There are three reasons, three reasons for praising a woman who fears the Lord. It honors God. It strengthens her hand in the Lord. And it feels good to honor and celebrate such a woman. To praise a God-fearing woman is to honor God. This is the most important reason of all, that we should honor such a woman because it blesses and praises God indirectly by blessing and praising something he made or by praising something that exalts him. We must not think here that, uh, that in praising the woman, we are giving her what belongs to God. This type of praise is in the name of the Lord. First yes. Corinthians chapter one, verse 31. This is why praising a God-fearing woman honors God because she honors God and in return, God rewards and honors her. In the Bible, there are also a few examples of mothers who were God-fearing women, such as Lot's oldest daughter in Genesis chapter 19, Tamar in Genesis 38, Deborah, Judges 4 and 5, Hannah, 1 Samuel chapter 1 and 2, the widow of Zarephath, 1 Kings 17, Luke 4, 25, Job's wife, Job 2 and Job 19 and Job 31, the mother of seven sons in the Maccabees, 
Maccabees 7, 4, Maccabees 16 through 18. The Seraphim Thana, the Seraphonician, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Seraphonician Canadite woman, Matthew 15, verses 18 through 21. Mark 7, 24 through 30. Salami, the mother of James and John, Matthew 20, 22, 23, and Matthew 27, and Mark 15. Mary, the mother of Jesus, Matthew 1, 16, 23, and Matthew 2, 11, Mark chapter 3, verse 31 through 35, Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 56, and Acts chapter 1, verse 12 through 14. There are, these are the names of the most memorable women in the Bible. And there was one, Horatius, she was a bad mother. She didn't do right. Y'all read that for yourself, it's in the Bible. Cause some of us didn't do right either at first, but thank God for his grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. Ah, thank you, Jesus. And the Lord is our mother. I want to say this, furthermore, God himself mothers us all. Amen? Amen. When you lost your own mother and your father and don't have any parents, God himself will be your mother and your father. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 14. It says, I have held my peace a long time. I have been still and restrained myself, says the Lord. Now I will cry like a woman in labor. I will pant and grasp at once, gasp at once. God will help his children as a God-fearing mother will help her children. Amen. Amen. Now, Suppose you saw a friend struggling to pass a test and you said to your friend, you have prayed, you have cried, you have studied and prepared to pass the test. Then you say to them, you can do all things to Christ which strengthens you, Philippians 4.13. You tell them, God's got this and you've got God. Walk in faith and have the victory. You have the victory in Jesus' name. This would give great faith and encouragement to strengthen your friend. Yes. It would strengthen their hands to continue on the journey of faith and trusting in the Lord to help as this woman, this God-fearing woman, as she presses forward to continue in the service the work, the ministry, the kingdom building of the Lord for strength and dignity are her clothing. Proverbs 31, 17. She girds her loins with strength and makes her arms strong. She is morally, mentally, and physically and spiritually strong. Romans chapter eight, verse one, four, and six says, a God-fearing woman walks in the spirit knowing that her steps are ordered by God. The fear of the Lord increases her intellectual strength. The fear of the Lord in, in is the impulse to the wisdom in the mind that searches for knowledge and understanding in the study of God's word as being her, her hiding place and treasure. This gives her new vigor, excitement, and hope about the future, knowing that greater is he that's in her than he that's in the world. And yes, if God be for her, who can be against her? Amen. Romans 8, 31. So then, the God-fearing woman is confident, hopeful, and remains eager in the Lord through all the tests, through all the trials, through all the tribulations, a woman who fears the Lord will live unselfishly. Instead, she lives for others 
especially her husband. If she is married, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 11 through 12 proclaims, the heart of her husband trusts in her and will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. A woman who fears the Lord will not waste the family's resources, but will have the complete trust of her husband because she is for him financially, morally, and spiritually. She cares for the needy. She lives for the God, for the good and the needy. She lives for the good and the needy. Proverbs chapter 31, I heard somebody say, these women that were blessed today live for the, for the needy, live to help those that are less fortunate in the community, in the church, in the family, abroad. Huh? Proverbs chapter 31, verse 20 proclaims, she opens her mouth, she opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hand to the needy. God has drawn near and secured this chosen, yielded, and responding vessel of God for his use and his purpose. She knows that her life or her candle will not go out by night, by troubles. She knows that her life and her future are in the Lord's care. Now she draws near to those who need most help. This woman in Proverbs 31 is well equipped, well known, and well esteemed. If she's not well equipped, she should be getting equipped. Amen. But she does not let her status hinder her ministry and mission to and for the less fortunate of humanity and society. So it is with those who fear the Lord and hope in him. Proverbs 23, 17 proclaims, there are always temptations to lure us away from the fear of God, such as temptations to fear financial insecurity, temptations to fear rejection by our peers, temptations to fear the loss of time spent in good deeds. Again and again, however, we must have our hands strengthened in God by God and by God's people. We need to hear a saintly person say, well done, press on my sister in Christ and Husband and children, a word especially for you on this Mother's Day. To, from Proverbs chapter 31, verse 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed. And her husband also. And he praises her. I said he praises her. He praises her. <laughs> children and you, think of a moment. What if your mother went on a vacation and never returned home? What would you wish on the next day that you could have told her before she went on vacation? Well, tell her right now. Do it today and mean what you say and do for her. Because tomorrow is not promised, but you still have your mother today. Don't take her for granted. And finally, a, to praise a God-fearing woman is to have joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. A joy is not fully enjoyed until it comes to expression and praise. This scripture says in Nehemiah verse, chapter 8, verse 9, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy you have in the special God-fearing woman. And I heard on Sunday school, somebody said, people that are in the Lord, you're special. I agree with that. The, can't nobody tell me it ain't no different. You don't tell me because I've been out there 
living for the devil. And I know now that I'm in God, it is a difference. And you got to stand up for your faith. I know it's a difference when you repent of your sins and believe on Jesus Christ that he died for your sins on the cross. They hung him high and stretched him wide. And three days later, he rose again after they put him in the cold, cold tomb. Can't nobody make me doubt God. And you got to know that you know that you know. Because you're going to have some naysayers in your life trying to make you doubt your faith. I'm going to stand on the faith on God's word. This God-fearing woman, the joy you have in this special God-fearing woman in your life today amounts to its highest when expressed in honesty from the heart. Don't fake it just to make it. Tell the truth. If you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. A company, it should be a company with truthful, loving, godly actions, such as giving your, your mother a kind compliment, a hug, help, a kiss. I fell out one day on the floor at home and I pretend I was gone from here. I was wanting to see if my children would come to me. I got to give you this example. So I fell out and I just said, I'm gonna act like I'm gone. So I just fell out, the kids gathered around me, all four of them. Mama, mama, wake up. And the other oldest one was telling the other younger three, mama go. She started crying for real. And then when I let them go through their little stuff for a little bit, and I woke up over my eyes, I said, I ain't gone. I said, Mama, here, yeah, I just wanted to see that you really love me. Did you really care? You know, and it really made a difference. I, I was like, I'm sorry I had to do that to y'all. But, you know, I was wondering if you really cared, if you really loved me. Don't y'all go home and do that now, uh, Mother. <laughs> But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a true witness, I, I, I'm a firm believer that all is working for the good. God will take your mess and use it in your message. So, yes, amen, and I'm almost done here. So give your mother a compliment, give her a kiss, flowers, a greeting card, a delicious meal or dinner, your time, talents, and other gifts of love, showing thankfulness and appreciation to her. Why, why should we praise a God-fearing woman? Because it feels good and it's so blessed to do so. This type of praise expresses and completes the joy. I said gratitude, give gratitude, pass it on. It completes the joy that such a woman brings wherever she goes and may be. She is confident and not anxious about the future. Gracious wisdom is on her lips. She girds herself with strength. She brings her husband honor by her support and she reaches out her hand to the needy. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. David says in Psalm 37, 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in everything that delights the Lord, and therefore delight yourself in the woman who fears the Lord. May God bless you. Happy Blessed Mother's Day to all the mothers. God bless you. The doors of the church are open. Amen. The doors of the church are open. Will you come forward, deacons and ministers, and take your place? The Lord is calling out to you through the Holy Spirit. If you do not know the Lord and the pardon of your sins, will you come to Jesus? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. You give God your heart and give the preacher your hand. Will you come to Jesus? 
Though your sins may be red as crimson, God will wash them white as snow. He shed his blood for you. He died on the cross at Calvary with the nails in his hands, the nails in his feet, the crown of thorns upon his head. They pierced him in the side and the blood came streaming down for you, for you, and you. He loved you. Jesus loves you. Will you come today? You're not too young. You're not too old. If God is pulling at you and nudging at your heart today, just come on, walk down the aisle. We'll meet you. We'll meet you. Your life will never be the same once Jesus comes in. Try Jesus. You've tried everything else. Now try Jesus. He satisfies. Will you come? Will you come? You may have backslidden and you want to come home to Jesus like the prodigal son. Will you come today? The Lord God is waiting for you. He's been waiting on you. You know who you are. Come on back home to Jesus. just want prayer you feel like you can't make it any longer you feel like you're all alone you feel like you don't have a friend well Jesus is a friend that will go with you to, through thick and thin will you come give Jesus a try give him a chance let him work in your life on your behalf he'll make your life brand new do I see one? Do I see one from a distance? Will you come? Will you come? Jesus will give you salvation. He will save you. He will make you over. He will make you new from the inside to the outside. Nobody can do you like Jesus. But we can no longer tarry. But after the church service is over, you may contact the church. And the church is always open during the weekdays. You can come by the church. We have the phone number here. And I'm going to give it to you because I want, I, I, in my spirit, I'm sensing somebody wants to come. But they don't have the courage to do it. But God will help you. That phone number is 757 for the church, 229-0759. At this time, we're going to go ahead, amen, and have a word of prayer. Lord, bless those that wanted to come but did not come for salvation on today to give their life to Christ. Lord, thank you for the blessing of this Mother's Day service. Honored unto you, dear God, in glory and praise. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the blessing of the mothers. And may you continue to be with them and carry them through. By faith and grace and mercy, we pray in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 All right, at this time, we're going to have Holy Communion. Everyone, amen. Will you stand, please? If you... We will have uh, the scripture. First of all, we will have the church covenant. And the scripture will be given following the church covenant by Deacon Bernard Payne. And the communion prayer will follow that by Deacon David Mack Sr., then we will partake of the uh, elements. Amen. You have your, does everyone have their Holy Communion? Has everyone been served their Holy Communion? If you have not, please let us show, will you show by hand raised?
Holy Communion, uh, the Church Covenant. All right. It's up on the screens for everyone to view and to read along. We will read in unison. The Church Covenant. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church and knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of a difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit and if we cannot unanimously agree, we would cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our Kenyan and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men to exemplify and command our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exalt and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay and through life amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who has called us out of darkness and to his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. Amen. We will now have scripture by Deacon Bernard Benet. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if you were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. The word of God. Amen. 
Amen. Deacon Mack will come with the prayer, communion prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, here we are. We're in your house of worship. Being obedient to your word, we have set the table. And Father, as we partake of these elements, we ask that you change the wine, let it represent the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The bread represent his body that was bruised for our sins. And as he said in the scripture, as we do this, let us come together as one body in Christ, seeking peace and love for one another. We ask, Father, that you remove from us anything that will cause us to sin against thee. Anything that will cause us to take this element and become sick when we do not do the things that are pleasing in your eyesight. So Father, we just ask you in the name of Jesus to purge our hearts and minds. Give us, Lord, what we need. For Jesus said, if we ask it in his name, that you, the Father, would give it. So this day we ask, and Father, that you remove from us anything that will cause us to sin against thee. This is our prayer, Father. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 At this time, if you have your Holy Communion cups, has everybody been served? Has anyone been omitted? Amen. Will you open it up to the bread, the body of Jesus, broken for you, his love, his sacrifice for you. Let us all eat together. In the same manner, this is the cup of the New Testament, the blood of Jesus. Without the shedding of the blood of Jesus, there is no remission or forgiveness of our sins. Let us all drink together, all of it. Amen. Let us pray and have benediction. Uh, Reverend. Mo oh, Before the benediction. Given. Um, Deacon Pang. <laughs> I want to thank um, Reverend Hill for that powerful sermon. Um, it brought tears to my eyes thinking about my mother uh, because I knew my mother loved me and um, I was there by her side um, to the end. Um, those words rang out for me when you said, um, tell your mother you love her if you can today. You might not be able to do it tomorrow. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Hill. That was a powerful sermon. And we lift up the women of uh, St. John, yes. all the mothers. Yes. Thank you, Carla, my wife. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Remember the sick and shut in. Um, yes. We can't always visit them now, but right. remember them. They're still there. Yeah. They will always be with us, and we need to let them know that we care about them and love them. Yeah. Uh, we will have offering baskets in the back, and we'll have the offering baskets up here on the side as you exit. Um, 
I just want to thank everybody for coming out today. Amen. Uh, remain standing through our benediction. Uh, we will have an usher. Can we get an usher up here uh, to guide uh, the congregation out? I think we're going to have that side go out that way and this side of the congregation go out through the side door here. We're not going to tarry in here because of COVID. So um, thank you all all for coming out today. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to just thank you for this God's day, a day you set aside that we could celebrate all our mothers. Thank you for our mother's blessings. Thank you, Lord, for using them in such a great way through motherhood as they carried us and took care of us and continue to care for us. May you continue to reign upon in their life with blessings, continue to strengthen them on every lane and side. And may the joy of the Lord continue to be their strength. And may their children continue to rise up and call them blessed. And may their husbands and their families continue to praise them in Jesus' name. Go with you in peace and be blessed. Let us say amen. 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 Thank you. Everyone here at the church knows my mother, Verma Lewis, but I know her on a whole different level as my mother. And she inspires me daily because she continues to live by the word of God and sets a perfect example of what a mother what a Christian should be. In 2020, January 20th, 2020 to be exact, my whole life turned upside down literally overnight. I was rushed to the hospital, VCU up in Richmond, and I was in organ failure at that time. I had a hospital stay that kept me in and out of the hospital for about a 10 month span of time. During that time, I had, as I said, organ failure, so I had to be on dialysis to keep me alive. I had water in my lungs. I had a blood clot to my chest and I had septus of the blood, which was a blood infection. Any one of those things is uh, very serious and potentially deadly on its own. And I had all those. Um, <clears throat> at the time, I, I had other friends and family who decided not to support me through my struggle and my time where I needed to really rely on my faith who never left me was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And also who never left me was my mother, Verma S. Lewis. She stayed with me day in, day out at the hospital, in and out of the hospital when I was recuperating from multiple surgeries taking me to dialysis treatments, doctor's appointments. At times I was so weak that 
I couldn't even dress or bathe myself. But my mother was there. She never left my side the entire time. She put everything else on hold. And, you know, through her prayer, her constant prayer and devotion to God and her love for Jesus Christ and for her son, through God's grace and mercy, I'm here with you today. And that's why she, many, many reasons, but that's just one of many reasons why she continues to inspire me as my mother. And she's an inspiration to all that know her. Very active part of St. John Baptist Church. She is co-sponsor of Prayer and Praise Ministry, which takes place on Wednesday nights. The other sponsor is her sister, my aunt, Cheryl Powell, another beautiful, strong woman of God that's a mother. She has been on the senior usher board since the 1990s, a dedicated member to service of God, his people, and the congregation of St. John Baptist Church. My mother also has served in the food ministry. She's also served in many other ministries throughout the church, as well as she has been a member of this church since she was 12 years of age. Yes, my mother is very active in her life. She has worked and she is retired, a retiree over uh, 30 plus years when she worked for Owens Brockway, which is a manufacturing job, as well as she worked at Eastern State Hospital. Um, she also is a Mary Kay consultant for over 25 years, and she's in several different walking clubs because she's always conscious about staying in good health and being in good shape. So she walks daily with these clubs and uh, she also currently works at a daycare uh, in the county and, and takes care of young children uh, from infants to three years of age. Yes, my mother is a strong, strong woman of God. She keeps a Bible on hand just about everywhere she goes. She has continued, even through this pandemic, to be a woman of God, staying in God's word day in, day out. She has been a strong supporter of St. John Baptist Church as a lifelong member of this congregation. She is encouraging people to always be safe and be aware and comply with all the different COVID guidelines, but she comes to church in this sanctuary as well as supporting St. John Baptist Church online uh, with the online platforms that we have. Uh, she is always, always has St. John at the center of her heart. All right, I just want to give a shout out to my wife, uh, Dorinda Marsh. Um, we just want to let you know that we really appreciate all the sacrifices that you make for the family and um, everything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And we just want to let you know that we appreciate you on this Mother's Day. 
Um, we want to let you know that we love you um, and we don't say it enough and we should say it more, but we just want to say it on Mother's Day because uh, they are honoring you and we just, we honor you today and we just want to let you know that we love you and you are and we just want to let you know that we really appreciate you. Um, we, we know that you are, uh, you know, recently retired. We know that you uh, have worked with kids in the school and, and then you come home and you, you cook and you do things for the family. Um, and we just want to let you know that even with our kids, Rasan and, and Jordan, who you take to appointments and, and you do things for them on a day-to-day -day basis, we just want to let you know that we really appreciate you. And, um, and I believe that, you know, this is why you are nominated for, uh, you know, Woman of the Year, and you are the Woman of the Year in our household. And so we just want to let you know that, once again, we love you. Well, um, she has inspired me personally because um, of all the things that she has taken on, she's taken on a lot. I mean, you know, she's, she's worked at the library, she's, she's been a school teacher, um, working with children, and then on top of that, she comes home and on a day-to-day -day basis, she does things for the family that she really doesn't even have to do. And so, you know, we're just inspired by what she does. Um, and you can see that she might be tired sometimes, but she continues to do what she does. And we really appreciate it. Um, yes, Dorinda has sung on the, the choir. She sung on the praise team. Um, I know she's sung, um, uh, but yeah, she's sung on the praise team. Um, I, I think she's worked with, uh, yeah, she's worked with the Boy Scouts, Boy Scouts of America. Um, and so she's just taken on so many different tasks and we just, you know, we just appreciate her for that. And I know you all appreciate her. And, um, and once again, we just want to wish her a uh, uh, happy Mother's Day on this Mother's Day. Well, <laughs> you know, like any mother, she makes sure that um, everything around us is clean, you know, washing our hands and uh, disinfecting things and just making sure that we all protect it uh, around the house, you know, and you, you can't ask for anything more than that because sometimes living with uh, a bunch of guys, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, we can be a little messy. And so we just appreciate her for, you know, all the sacrifices she makes once again, uh, coming behind us, cleaning, disinfecting, just doing, just motherly things. And I just want to say that, you know, Dorinda, we really love you. We, we don't, we can't say it enough. And we want to let you know that you are the Wonder Woman of our household. God bless you. Mama, Mama, you know I love you. You know I love you, Mama. Mama, you're the queen of my heart. Your love is like tears from the stars. Mama, I want you to know loving you is like food for my soul. God bless you. We love you.